you all here. Um, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about uh, why 2023 is, is sort of an unusual year and how to reach our end of year fundraising goals. So that's what we're going to do. I mean, for most of you, um, end of summer, right? It means back to school. It means, uh, you know, back to work in some cases. It also means it's sort of showtime for nonprofit fundraisers, right? Like this fall into winter is our time. This is when we do our things. This is why you get paid the big bucks. Uh, and so we are going to talk about how do we hit goals uh, in a pretty... Um, in a pretty big way. So there's some really important things. Uh, we will, as you might imagine, send the slides and the recording around later today. Uh, so you can refer back to this. You can share with your team if you all are thinking about your end of your strategy and you want to have some discussion points to, to really foster uh, a better plan. Feel free to do that as well. Some very quick housekeeping notes before we get rolling. This event, like all of them, is approved for 1.0 CFRE credits. Um, We'll add a question at the end of the session. There, there's a survey at the end of the session. Just make a quick note in there. We'll help certify your participation. That'll be pretty easy. Um, uh, and um, and here's the agenda. By the way, Aaron uh, in the chat just noted, searching for a new major gift officer. Um, Aaron, uh, so if anyone is looking for a gig, uh, uh, hit up Aaron. Aaron, if you want to drop your contact info in the chat, uh, we can have folks reach out to you as well. So. I know folks are already always thinking about that. Here is the agenda for today. We'll do some very quick intros. We'll talk about um, we'll talk about the broader context in the world, and this is going to be really important, right? And then we'll dive into some specific insights in giving, some strategies to implement. But all this sort of derives from what is the moment in time that we're in, and how does that differ from year end 2018, 2008, you know, 2001, 1996, if some of you were working then you know, 1980s for some of you, how, how are things changing? And what does that mean that we have to do uh, to change? Um, so quick intros before we get started here. My name is Patrick. I've got to meet a lot of you. Uh, this is me a couple of years back. At some point, we'll update these pictures um, alongside my wonderful co-founder, Jenny. Jenny's out in Seattle. I'm down in South Florida where um, no hurricanes yet near us, but we're keeping an eye out for that. And then we get to work alongside the entire free will team, which is fun, diverse, lovely, smart, uh, very kind. And, and we also get to work alongside 1,300 nonprofits like you. So many of you are free will partners. I just want to say a special thank you to you. Um, our team combined has about four centuries of fundraising experience. And, and we get to sort of think all the time about how is the world changing? What does it mean for you? How do we help hit goals? using technology and software and things like that. So uh, that's where we come from. That's a little bit of our background. Um, one last thing before I get rolling is, you know, we, we as I just mentioned, are really grateful to have you here for an hour learning, thinking about how to push your organization, how your organization could push its mission forward, how you can push your career forward. And so we just like to say thank you with some thank you gifts and, um, we are going to be sending a copy of one of my favorite books called Think Again by Adam Grant. Um, so Adam's a psychologist, has wrote a bunch of uh, great work here, uh, different books that are great. Think Again is really helpful for folks in a changing world and a changing environment, which is all of you. So this book is about you know how do you continually update your mental models of the world, given new things. And especially for those of you that are experts and have been here a long time doing this work, you know, it, it's really important that we keep updating our, our view of things, our strategies, et cetera. And so part of what we're going to do is in the next hour is sort of talk about how some of these models that we think about have to change a little bit. But also this book is really helpful for just thinking about how to think in general. So I love it. Um, we will send a copy uh, to 20 folks. Please make a note in the chat, excuse me, not in the chat, in the survey at the end of the session, if you're interested in this book, right? So survey at the end of the session, uh, that's where it goes. Okay, a couple quick things here. We asked y'all how your week is going. Look, um, first of all, folks, a little bit, little dip in happiness. I think this is often happens at the end of summer, right? Back to real work. Kids go back to school. Uh, for some of you, the daylight starts to fade a little bit, especially farther north. It gets a little colder. But, you know, generally things I think are looking good. Uh, and not as good news, a little bit of a dip again in how confident we are about hitting our goals this year. Now, I, I think many of you are going to do much better than you think. I think that there's there's some pessimism here based on last year. We'll talk about that 
in a moment, but generally there's there should be a very clear path to you hitting your goals. And, and I'll talk through what that looks like momentarily. Okay, so end of year at a glance. So let's sort of talk about, when we talk about end of year and end of year fundraising, what do we mean? Usually we think about this kicking off with Giving Tuesday. Uh, if you're not in the United States, it still falls on the Tuesday after the United States Thanksgiving. So, uh, so uh, meaning Giving Tuesday is celebrated globally, American Thanksgiving is celebrated in the United States. Um, and this year it is on November 28th. So it occasionally drifts into early December, usually late November. This year, November 28th, mark your calendars. This was Giving Tuesday, many people don't know this. It was founded by the United, uh, excuse me, the 92nd Street Y in partnership with the UN Foundation only 11 years ago. So it's a relatively new phenomenon. Um, hats off to the, the 92nd Street Y in New York for making this possible. And it has become one of the biggest giving days of the year. In fact, in 2022, 35 million US adults participated and many more people around the world. Uh, and you saw some pretty big, big numbers there. When we ask you all, are you participating? You can see that this year, 60% of folks are participating. So it's really, really growing here. You know, the no's are down to 21%. A couple folks aren't sure yet. But I mean, this is a this is remarkable. An event that started only 11 years ago, now 60% of, of major nonprofits are participating. So this is a really big deal. Um, when we look at the last week of the year, right? So, so we're really kicking off things with Giving Tuesday from a giving standpoint. There's some strategies we need to do in advance, but, but from a giving standpoint, we're kicking off with Giving Tuesday. We're gonna end all the way at midnight, December 31st. And, and these last two days tend to be the biggest giving days of the year. So they're very important. They're driven by urgency, the last chance to give by midnight tonight. Uh, interest in things like finding the best charities spike in December. Over one third of all charitable giving occurs in December. Right, so these things uh, tend to happen in a pretty big way. December is December is our Super Bowl, right? So we have to start thinking about how how we make the most of it here. When we ask you all about you know what are our actual goals, well, look, you know most of you say, look, this is it's it's money time, right? Ninety percent dollars raised, top 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 goal. Second goal is donor retention. Are we going to get back the donors from last year? Uh, number three and number four, very close, donor engagement and new donors. Right, so that you'll see that Giving Tuesday, particularly, is a good new donor day. Um, diversifying giving channels, twenty nine percent, and a couple others there. Right, but this is how this is how most of the your peers are thinking about this. So important to think, important to get a good sense here. When we look, and our, our friends over at Give Butter, which is a really good tool for folks who are uh, very very small organizations, so they do really well with clubs and you know mostly volunteer led or one or two person organizations. Uh, we're big fans of them when they look at their year-end revenue, right? So year-end revenue here is defined from Giving Tuesday to the end of the year. Half of it comes from after December 25th, 20% comes on December 31st, and about 4% comes on Giving Tuesday. Now, Giving Tuesday seems pretty small here. I'm going to talk in a moment about why it's actually pretty important. A couple end-of-year trends, right? When we look back, you know, we always can sort of look back to re recent history, how things are changing to get a better sense of what's likely to happen in the future. So, so taking a little, you know, quick, quick uh, stroll down memory lane here until about 10 months ago, nine months ago, uh, giving, end of year giving was not great in 2022. It, it wasn't, right? It wasn't your best year. And some of you might've felt this at your own organization. Maybe you thought, did I have the right plan? What happened? Well, you know, it was a rough, rough year all over. Um, what we saw here, Giving Tuesday in 2024 was down 2% from 2021. That is not inflation adjusted, so it was down even more. And overall, in 2022, um, giving was down 6.4% individual giving. Now, overall giving was down less because corporate giving went up, bequests, right? Plan gifts are on the up, and 2022 is, is, is the best year for many people. 2023 is going to be a better year. 2024 is going to be a better year. Foundation giving went up. These all saw, saw an increase in 2024, excuse me, 2022, but but it really, what sunk us was individual giving, right? And, and individual giving is a big part of end of year. So we're gonna focus on how to turn that around. Um, we look at this, right? And we say, okay, how did, well, how did 2022 compare to 2021? What you saw here is um, a bunch of stuff, right? Coming up, you know, relatively better in January. See that 0% that number? That says, when did we do better than last, than the same month last year? When did we do worse? So, you know, February is the only month in the early part of the year 
where we're doing worse. And then what happens is end of year giving falls off a cliff, right? So down 4%, 3%, uh, not quite a cliff, but you can see most of the, the drop from last year actually happens from lower end of year giving. So we're gonna talk about turning some things around here. 4% uh, drop in online giving. And actually what happened in 2022 was a relatively poor December 31st. So December 31st saw a 13% revenue decline with a 22% decrease in email revenue. Really interesting stuff here, right? It's, it's really uh, fallen. Um, but it, it doesn't make us, it doesn't make me, it doesn't make us that pessimistic about this year. And I'm not saying this to make you feel better. We're trying to do a, a real analysis here. 2022 was a bit of a strange giving year. Why is this? Well, pretty rough economic year, many of you remember. A little economic instability, uh, what people described as burnout post-pandemic. It was a midterm election year, so there was a lot of money, right? And a lot of people asking for money from the Democratic and Republican parties, right? A lot, of, a lot of gubernatorial race, every House seat, one third of Senate seats, right? So a lot of, a lot of giving activity that falls outside the scope of charitable giving. Um, in 2021, we might have seen a, a surge in giving due to post-pandemic return to normalcy. So 2021, people felt flush with cash, giving a lot. 2022, they might have said, ooh, times are tougher. I'm going to pull back. I gave a lot last year. When we ask you all, how do we think we're going to do in 2023 compared to 2022, about a third of you say better. So pretty positive about, look, half say, look, I don't know. Like, yeah, I'm here because I'm, I want to figure this out, but I don't know and only 15% expect to do worse, right? So some optimism here as well, um, and that's really good to see. I wanna talk for a moment, not about giving, but about what's happening in the world and how that's likely to affect giving in a moment. So, so bear with me here, because there are a couple of really big things that are happening. One is inflation is still a problem. And the US dollar has lost 15% of its value since 2020. This hurts inflation adjusted fundraising as raising the same nominal amount, right? Let's say you had a hundred that you raised a million dollars in 2020, a million in 21, a million in 2022, a million in 23. Well, that's less valuable for your impact each year, right? So lower purchasing power, you feel that personally, it's also true organizationally. And yet what's happening is small dollar donors are not increasing their gifts that keep up with inflation because they're still mentally anchored to, oh, I really like this organization. I give X amount every year. And it used to be in a 2% inflation world, which is where we were for much of the last decade, well, I give $150 every year, I give $200 every year, that held steady in terms of actual value. But even though inflation has slowed, it hasn't gone down, we're not in deflation, right? So we're still having trouble with the anchor point, we're still suffering from all of the inflation over the last 24 months, um, even though in the last six months, it's gotten a lot better. So that's a really important thing, right? Our, our, we, are, we are having challenges because what people are anchored to giving, even if they give it again, it's, nomin it's sort of nominally the same, but objectively worse because we have less purchasing power than we did two years ago. Now, in contrast, the, the economy is remarkably strong. I, right before this, and I didn't get to put it in the slides, I was reading a report from Goldman Sachs because I try to you know, be up to the minute on economic news in order to make sure that you are getting the right information. And they have turned their expectations saying the chance of a recession is now only 15% over the next 12 months, one five, 15. Whereas you know, months and months ago, people were saying, oh, a recession is almost certainly coming. And so the expectations of the, of the economy has gone, gotten way better. And you see this in the stock market. I mean, this is a enormously good year for the stock market, right? S&P is up 20%, NASDAQ is up 30% year to date, right? This isn't even over 12 months. This is since January 1st. Uh, Bitcoin, right? We talked a lot about crypto a year ago and then it sort of fell off the map. Year to date crypto is up 56%. These are, these are really big numbers. Joblessness is at record lows. You know, the gap between white unemployment and, and black unemployment is at a historic low. Wage growth is strong and now it's outpacing inflation. All these are good signs, right? Inflation is back under control. And so we're still dealing with a challenge where because the economy has gotten so politicized, you know, not everyone is sort of open to saying, oh yeah, the economy is doing great. But objectively, the economy is doing great. And it signs, it, it points to a really strong end of year giving season. 
in a way that just wasn't true in 2020, right? Much closer to 2021, excuse me, 2022, much closer to 2021 in terms of outcomes here. Um, so this is a really big piece. Now I'm gonna ask some questions and hopefully you know, folks can fire away in the chat. You know, when we think about how strong the economy is, and particularly how strong the stock market is, right? What kind of gifts are most affected by stock market increases, most affected positively? Okay, so Emily says DAF and stock. Uh, Ryan says DAFs. Uh, so does Laura. Karen says IRA gifts. Major gifts, QCDs, right? Um, DAFs and IRA distributions. Legacy giving, yep. Stock gives. Great. All right. So y'all are mostly right, right? Corporate giving as well. Um, what we see here is a couple of things, right? So first stock giving, and this is sort of obvious, but stock gifts, you know, if I give you one share of Apple stock and that stock is worth 25% more than if I had given you one share a year ago, well, that's a lot better for you, right? And by the way, it's better for me. I'm getting a much bigger tax deduction here. So um, that's really exciting. So stock gifts, that was the easy one. Right, the second is donor advised funds, right? Many of you know this, we'll talk more about this in a moment. There's there's well over $200 billion, the capital B, you know, sitting in donor advised funds. And guess what, get, when we say sitting, guess what we mean? We don't mean locked in a, a vault, right? In terms of just, you know, uh, suitcases worth of hundreds. What we do mean is mutual funds and, and mostly mutual funds and stocks, although it tends to be more mutual funds. And all those are going up with the stock market, right? So if I had, if I had $2 million in a DAF, um, and most of that's in the NASDAQ. Well, I had 2.6 million this year. I had 2 million at the end of last year and I didn't I didn't give anything out. And so suddenly we're in a much more abundant mindset in donor advised funds. Those numbers are going way up. So most of these are invested in mutual funds. Third, and, and many of you mentioned this, um, if you don't, if you're not talking to your older donors about uh, what we call qualified charitable distributions, these are gifts directly out of an IRA for someone over 70 and a half. And if you don't, if you don't know much about these, um, first of all, get smarter on them now. Two, there's we have a, a webinar that we did a while ago on, on older donors that will go much deeper into this. But these gifts are exploding among old, older donors, right? Older donors are saying, wow, this is by far the best um, way for me to give to avoid taxation. And um, and, the, and the big news is, you know, the, there's, already, there's already about $9 trillion in IRAs, trillion with a T, right? Capital T. And that money is growing really quickly. So, so good news all around in terms of retirement savings, things like that. Really good news for giving from your over 70 cohort. And guess what? Everything we know about demographics means that there are a lot more people who are over 70 this year than last year, and certainly a lot more than five years ago. So a lot of big stuff here. Um, trend three, uh, a little bit more complicated here. Look, th this, is, this is the last four months in a while before the presidential election becomes just the dominant news story all the time. So what's gonna happen? You know, we're gonna have end of year. We're gonna take a really deep breath and a couple long naps. And then boom, it's the Iowa caucuses, right? January 15th, two weeks, almost to the date after end of year, they're gonna begin. We're going quickly to New Hampshire. Then we go to South Carolina, um, you know, Nevada, other states, Super Tuesday is not far behind. And so this is going to be the dominant story of 2024. You have a very competitive, well, a very crowded, not yeah, competitive Republican primary. You will then have a very competitive general election. Our country's uh, just in a spot where all the general elections are very competitive. And unlike previous years or previous elections, we're likely to have at least four trials, um, probably quite more of former President Donald Trump. At least one of these, the one in Atlanta is going to be televised. And so just the amount of attention that is gonna, gonna get turned from your donors focused on this is going to be a ton. In 2024, you know, we're still gonna see it could be a harder year for giving because so much attention is sucked in by the presidential race, the Republican primary, everything else, right? It's just gonna be harder to get attention in 2024 than in 2023, which means it's really a big deal to, to crush 2023. Now, historically, Giving a charity does not decrease during election years, although we did see it in 2022. Even though political giving is going to rise, and there will be well over, you know, there'll be billions and billions of dollars given to this election across all races. But giving does tend to go down among folks who are less political, and giving goes down to what you might think of as non-affiliated organizations, like colleges, hospitals, museums, et cetera. 
Now, I'm not saying the other ones that are, are you know, that folks that are, you know, easily identifiable as more conservative, more liberal are necessarily affiliated, right? It's not a legal thing, but but people will associate you with the parties. They'll get more excited about this. Those of you that are at something like uh, a more conservative advocacy organization or something like the ACLU, you will see giving going up here, but your folks that are, you know, very, very nonpartisan, very much more apolitical, you may see giving drop as people divert it to some more political giving. So some interesting things there. All right, so that's the macro context, right? We're just dealing in a fascinating world. And what do we wanna keep in mind here at the end of the year? Well, the first thing to know is to understand the real value of Giving Tuesday. And, and you don't have to participate in Giving Tuesday, right, to, to appreciate this point, but it is important what it signifies. So $3 billion was raised on Giving Tuesday. This was a big increase from 2021 big increase in 2022, right? So we're on the way up here. And it was responsible for 4% of online year-end revenue. That's not the big exciting thing. Uh, we're gonna talk more about in a moment why Giving Tuesday is so important. December obviously is even bigger. We mentioned December 31 brings in 20% of year-end revenue. Many sectors raise 30% of all of their yearly revenue uh, on the last day of the year, right? So that can happen. The last week of the year, it brings in 47% of online year-end revenue. So year-end is like, you know, end of November into December. And when we think about the focus here, right, what are we what are we doing? What's shifting here? Well, obviously cash gifts are up there, but this is going to be lower than it was in, in past years. Here's, what you, here's what's really interesting. When we think about where we're focusing, you know, these numbers for gifts of stock from donor advised funds, from QCDs, these numbers are way up from previous years, way up. I don't have them in front of me, but I think it would, look, would have looked more like 27% uh, in previous years. And what we're seeing is this sort of industry-wide shift away from focusing only on cash giving and really pushing these non-cash gifts. A really big shift. And you see the organizations that are doing this are being really successful. So this is a this is a really big trend that we're reflecting in real time. We'll talk more about that in a second. Second insight here is that donor advised funds continue to be an enormous way to give, right? So despite declines in overall giving, DAFs went up in 2022. And across some of these big donor advised funds, there were three and a half million grants, not three and a half million dollars, individual grants, totaling about 23 billion just from a handful of these donor advised funds. Now there's about a thousand donor advised funds in the country and together they end up giving a lot more. But these are, this is an enormous chunk of overall giving. Um, and so really, really important to understand it, to start making a plan for it, talk about what that plan is in a second. Now, some interesting and exciting things here, right? Overall, new donors have been down. But a lot of the folks giving out of donor advised funds are new donors to you, right? They're, these are folks who have a donor advised fund and are now actively looking to make grants. 77% were retained donors, so that's really exciting. Most people, contrary to popular belief, share contact information with donors, excuse me, with, with, with uh, organizations to follow up, to hear more, to be asked for second gifts and third gifts and 10th gifts. So this is really exciting. And a lot of people get worried about, uh, you know, how much money is in donor advised funds. It's an important thing to think about, but compared to foundations, this money is going out the door very quickly. 75% of dollars are dispersed within five years. This is a really good thing for the industry if, and a big if, if you're actively asking for donor advised fund dollars. If you're not asking, you're not gonna get them, just like everything else you know about fundraising. So there's more than $200 billion. My guess is there's probably about 260, 280 uh, right now sitting in donor advised funds waiting to be given out. Uh, and so this is a really, really big moment uh, for donor advised funds. Uh, Deborah asks, we have said a thousand tax in the country, yes. So Deborah, that's not a thousand account holders, that's a thousand institutions that, that hold donor advised funds. So great question. Uh, Ryan asks, how do you ask for DAFs? Which is great, because we'll talk about that in about three minutes. So thank you, Ryan. Um, insight three, this is a really important point. This is sort of uh, one of the broad macro trends of our time. Major donors are sticking around more than small dollar donors. Uh, Giving Tuesday reports, and this is, this is the organization, it's not the day, I just wanna be specific about that. Um, so overall in 2022, there were 10% fewer donors giving. It was a huge drop from 2021 to 2022. It's much bigger than the drop in money. 
And almost all of that is there were fewer small dollar donors, right? Small dollar donors are on the decline cyclically. I mean, this is a real and, and system-wide real challenge here. These are folks that we call them $500 or less. That's how we talk about small dollar donors. Major donors, that's what the, the report would have called it, which is uh, 5K to 50K um, and supersized donors saw many fewer decreases, right? So our, so our bigger donors are sticking around, they're continuing to give. Small donors are on the way down uh, for better or worse. And um, when we look at the number of people giving over 5K, that number is barely, barely ticked down. But the number of folks giving below 5K and below $500 is dropping pretty precipitously. So there's a lot of challenges here. Um, giving, coming back to the Giving Tuesday point, uh, this is really, really important. So data shows that Giving Tuesday boosts the entire giving season. So it's not necessarily the value of the money raised on that day, although that money is significant. But organizations who did promotion on Giving Tuesday saw a 40 to 60% donor increase during the entire end of year giving season compared to the compared to prior years when they did no promotion. So what we're doing, and my sense here, uh, well, we'll talk about this right now, actually. Um, well, actually, before we get there, I just want to I want to come back to this, this point about starting early, because it will it'll be on a future slide. But you know, when you go into um you know, a CVS or a Walgreens or a grocery store, you're going to be annoyed in the next few days about how early Halloween decorations are out, right? And then as soon as Halloween ends, you're going to be like, it's, we're not ready for Christmas, but holiday, you know, Christmas and Hanukkah decorations are going to get whipped out on November 1st. And why do they do that, right? You might say, I don't, I don't really want to think about, you know, Christmas while it's still 75 degrees outside. And what's happening is that folks know at those stores know that if we are thinking about it for longer, you know, being primed earlier, seeing it more often in these sort of key moments, we're more likely to spend more money on it. And that's exactly what happens in the Giving Tuesday context, where we start early and the giving season just expands, which means the amount of times we're thinking about giving expands, which means the amount of giving that happens expands. So the starting early ends up being really, really, really important. So when, all right, so pause on that new point. When we think about how do we smash our year-end goals, it's really the sort of five-part component that I'm going to lay out right now, and then I'm going to go deeper on each of them. First thing, just what I just said, start early. Participate in Giving Tuesday or do something else, but do it on the same kind of timeline. So if you don't want to be involved in Giving Tuesday, no problem, right? 40% said we're not doing it yet. You know, you've got your own plans, no problem. What I do want to tell you is, around that time or earlier, figure out some way to officially kick off end of year before mid-December, right? Then you're going to lose if you do, if you wait too long. Second, remember that, that really we're going to be driving our success from the top end of our donors, right? That's where most of our money is going to come from. How do we think about taking our existing donors and pushing them into higher brackets of giving? We're going to talk about that in a second. Three, one of the fastest ways to do that is to change the way people give. And you saw in that slide of what types we're prioritizing, how much of that is happening, but that's gonna be the fastest and most effective way to change gift size in an upward directory. Four, we're gonna make a plan around donor advised funds in particular, right? These are exploding. They may be 20% of all giving this end of year, maybe 25% in really big chunks. And then five, this is also really important. We'll talk about this in a second. We need to leverage our end of year energy Right, so much of attention is happening end of year to actually build the relationship and get folks to go beyond giving, right, or beyond this one-time giving. Uh, so this will be really, really key. So, all right, strategy one: we are starting to send early outreach. Everything we know about marketing, right, both both from your uh, your anecdotal experience in the CVS when Halloween candy comes way too early and all of the academic research behind it shows that early and repetition is always better. Most giving happens towards the end of the year, but if you wait until then to educate donors about giving or ask them to give, you'll miss out. And that, that's one of the faster ways to miss your goals is just delay the full kickoff. One, one piece of data here uh, is that we did a deep analysis on some of our partners who were asking for IRA gifts, right? These qualified charitable distributions that are exploding. 
And those that asked three times over the course of a year or emailed to educate three times saw an enormous boost, not always in that moment, but at end of year compared to folks that didn't, right? Huge, shift, huge shifts, right? Two, three, four times more giving. And so this ends up being really, really, really important. If we can, right, as mentioned this already, participate in Giving Tuesday so we feel that early kickoff. If you can't, no problem, make a plan to launch Giving Season in November, right? Kick it off early. If someone says it feels like too early, it doesn't matter, they're already thinking about it. It's a moment where, where people are particularly open to giving. So when we talk about education, Giving Tuesday is a unique moment where people are thinking about philanthropy broadly, as opposed to the cause broadly. So it's an ideal time to share about larger gifts, right? A lot of folks did, weren't raised by people who are major donors. And so they don't know about this. They don't know about the avenues. And we're gonna need to teach them some folks about what, how to do this. Uh, second strategy. We want to take a plan, we want to make a plan to move our donors to a new giving bracket. What does that mean? Look, it means that folks in the 5K to 50K range account for 25% of all dollars raised, and folks over 50K account for nearly half of all donors raised, all dollars raised, right? So combined, we're looking at three quarters, and yet this is often not where the focus lies. Many small donors are valuable in that they are potentially larger donors, but you will need your help in moving up, right? And you might even want to just do some back in the envelope math. So, you know, you sit there tomorrow and say, okay, great. Well, our end of year goals is 50,000, 500,000, you know, 10 million. How many of each kinds of don't, of uh, each size of gift will we need to get there? And what is our plan to do that? And you'll start to see, you know, you're going to need a lot of $50 donors to make that, or you might need a fewer 5,000 or even fewer 50,000. And instead of only looking at the folks who previously give 50,000, looking at that pool of $500 donors and saying, oh, some of these we can we can bring to the 5K and 50K range, right? Not all of them, some of them. Some of the five to 50K we can bring to the $200,000 range, right? And we have to start thinking about these plans along the way. Um, right, when we're looking at our donors from 100 to under 5,000, what's the plan? And what's the plan for 5K to 50K? When we try to hit our end of year goals with a large number of small cash donations, you are likely to miss your goals. And, if, and you can go back and look at years where you put a big effort into a large number of small dollar donations, and it's likely to fall short of what you're hoping for. And now the one or two exceptions here is Wikipedia or someone what is dealing with literally millions of, of individuals in traffic, you can make that happen. But if that is not you, it is unlikely that small cash uh, small dollar donors are likely to get you to where you want to be. These gifts, as I mentioned, are hurt by inflation. The folks who are giving cash and giving small amounts are, have not been increasing amounts to correspond for a weaker dollar. And what we're seeing is that these donors are the most likely to drop off, right? So it's really a Sisyphean task to try to hit your goals only with small donors. Um, and even the number of new donors that are small donors is decreasing as well. So there's some interesting stuff here as well, right? Instead, success you know, by organizations that are seeing it is done by increasing the number and size of major and supersized donors, right? That's really the path to success in 2023 that we see bear out in the industry. When we think about this, when we think about, okay, now we need a plan. What is the actual plan to move these sort of folks from being minnows to gorillas it's really a donor-centric approach that, that reflects mental anchor points, right? So many of you have heard me say this, but it's incredibly important. Organizations who focus on non-cash gifts grow six times faster than organizations who only focus on cash, six times faster. And the reason this is, is because donors just give way more when they give non-cash gifts. And the reason that is, is because the tax benefits are way better. So it just costs me less if I give you $1,000 in non-cash gifts versus $1,000 in cash. And it's a, the mental anchor point is different. So if you ask me for $500 or $1,000 or $5,000 in cash, I think, ooh, that's a lot of my paycheck, right? Or, or all of it. Um, but what I don't think, if I look at my investments, I think, oh, that's a relatively small portion of investments. And, and older donors in particular will think about this even more. And so we just have clear academic research that shows 
that we treat the amounts differently depending on where they're coming from. So this is really, really, really important. Um, and one of the one of the fascinating things, and I'll, I'll talk about how to put this in practice in a second, is that when you remind people of their investments, not only are you going to get more of these really big investment gifts, it's the cash gifts will always also get bigger because that we're pushing that anchor point, right? And so as much as we can remind people about investment gifts, yeah, we'll get a lot more stock gifts, we'll get some donor advised fund gifts, but even our cash gifts are going to push up, right? <laughs> Excuse me. So this is a really big opportunity to, to uh, drive some more benefits here. So when, when we have a checklist, we think about moving people up the up the scale. Here's a couple of you know five or six things you can put, and just you know later today, tomorrow, just say go down the list and say which of these are organization doing, which where are we falling short, how can we not fall short anymore? So one, do I have a link to non-cash giving types, donor advised funds, stocks, QCDs in particular? Also, maybe cryptocurrency, if you have Gen X, millennial, and Gen Z donors, possibly real estate, right? Those can be really big gifts. Is it on my website in a prominent position? Two, are they also on my donate page, knowing that especially at the end of year, this is going to be the most highest traffic page? Three, am I educating donors over email in September or October or November before end of year giving, right? When I have a little bit more space to think about this and, and really priming the pump for those gifts. Four, am I sending the permanent giving guide, which I'm going to show you in a second, via direct mail or even as an attachment in an email? And five, am I using what we call the magic sentence in all of my fundraising emails, right? Does whoever's doing the annual giving, are they using this every single time they ask for money? Because if not, their goals, right? Not even your goals, their goals are going to be hurt. So let's talk about the permanent giving guide first. You can see a picture of it. We're actually hard at work. Uh, at Free Will now, finalizing this to, to have, provide more visual templates and, and graphic templates for our partners. So if you're one of our partners, you know, be on the lookout for that very soon. Uh, you can see how good looking it is on the picture on the right. Um, and what you really want is one piece of direct mail in the end of your plan, ideally early. September is okay. October is okay. November is okay, right? Um, and what we're doing is we're sending something called the permanent giving guide. What is this? It's a letter or a brochure. It's we're asking donors, this is really important. We talked about this in our direct mail webinar a couple of weeks ago. One of the things about direct mail is it's designed to be held onto. And by the way, if you ask donors to hold on to something, they'll hold on to it. But you have to actively ask to keep this for your records, for your future reference. When you think about giving, use this guide to help inform it. What's in it? It's just explaining the benefits of some of these non-cash gifts, QCDs, donor advised funds, stocks, other ways to give and why they're so much better than cash, right? We don't need to send this to all of our donors, especially with direct mail, that gets expensive. But if folks have given more than $100, it's a sign that they could give significantly more if they change the way they give, right? And so a lot of these folks will turn into $1,000 donors or $10,000 donors or further. And so it's a really big avenue, but you're only sending it to the folks who have given previously, right, to save you money. Now, if you only have 100 donors, you might want to send it to everybody or hand it out personally, but um, if you're a house of worship, for instance, right, you might want to put a giant stack of these at the end, you know, at the, at the entrance uh, for folks. One thing that can be useful here to make people want to keep it even more is to include a note that says this is useful for any of your giving, not just your organization. And then whenever they think about philanthropic giving, they'll go back to this, they'll see your logo, they'll see your accounting information, they'll be reminded of you as well, right? So you're really their coach in giving broadly, super, super helpful. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, we, we've gone a lot deeper on this previously, but, but free will along the way has created a, a totally free AI tool that can help generate uh, a text version of this, right? So you'll have to put your own design on it. Um, but you can go to willy.freewill.com and check that out. Um, and that's pretty, pretty cool. So really, really important. One of the most important tactics you can do, you can do it this year and it will have benefits for years to come. Um, but it's really, really important that folks have this in their hands. Uh, one other way, let's say you're feeling like, ooh, either my boss says I can't spend any more money, and so I'm not going to get any direct mail out this year, or I'm super busy, you know, make this, right, make make the brochure, make it a one-pager, and record a short video, and then just attach this in the email, right? So you'll have a, have a video and just say, hey, listen, you know, we've been spending a lot of time trying to look out for folks like you. We know that there's a lot of giving types 
that are better for you because you can have more impact at less cost. A lot of people are choosing to do this. I hope you have a really great holiday season. I know you're thinking about this stuff. I hope this is useful for any of your giving. So just go check out the attachment and we'd encourage you to print it out and keep it. Um, and you'd be surprised your older donors still have printers, even if some of you don't. Uh, and so that's another way to do this on the cheap um, and get it out really quickly. Another bonus tip here is what we call the magic sentence. And so the magic sentence is this thing below your ask, right? Will you chip in today to support X? Small note, many people choose to give from their assets, stocks, gifts from their IRA, crypto, grants from their donor advised funds to see even larger tax savings. And then you just link out to more information there. Now, why are we doing this? Uh, as I mentioned, you can use uh, Willy to also make fundraising emails that will include this, custom to your organization. They're pretty awesome. Um, definitely would encourage you to check them out today. But why does this work? It works for two reasons. Again, we're getting more of these gifts. We're also anchoring people on their investments at this key moment when they're thinking about giving. So you'll see your average gift size go up when you include this in your email and you'll raise more money that way. Very, very, very easy. Um, Caesar asks, how do we know what the tax saving benefits are? Uh, Caesar, I'm not gonna go into all of that, but for the most part, you tend to get larger tax breaks, usually by avoiding things like capital gains and getting income tax deductions. Uh, we'll talk about all this. Um, other questions here uh, or other points? Um, we, As I mentioned earlier, going really big on qualified charitable distributions. These are gifts out of your IRA, right? Non-taxed uh, gifts from your IRA and donor advised funds that are exploding. Exploding. So in every one-on-one -on -one conversation you're having with major donors between now and December 31st, if you know they're over 70, you want to bring up QCDs. Uh, if you if uh, they're not, or either way, you may want to ask them questions like, um, you know, well, first we'll talk about QCDs. You know, have you made a qualified charitable distribution? Do you know a lot of people are? They will help satisfy your requirement of a distribution. If they're transferred before December 31st, there are some easy ways to do so. And a lot of donors are choosing to make this. Why? Well, at a certain age, the government says you have to start taking money out of your IRA. But those donors might say, well, you know, it's been a really good tax year, really good stock year, excuse me, have a lot of other investments. I don't want to take money out. I don't want to pay taxes on it. The government says too bad. At some point, you have to start taking money out. And the only way to avoid taxes is to send it directly to a charity. And that allows a donor to preserve all their post-tax wealth. So it's a lot better for them which is why older donors have been rushing to this way to give. Uh, and that's been pretty cool to see. On the donor advised fund, we need to keep finding which of our donors has a donor advised fund, right? And so every one-on-one -on -one conversation, you wanna say something like, many of our folks are increasingly using donor advised funds to make grants to our organization. Do you have one? And if not, no problem, right? But uh, there's a couple of key components here. The big thing is that Donor advised funds are growing so quickly that yeah, they're new to you, right? And we're doing professional education on this, but they're also very new to their donors who are definitely not doing professional education on this. So we really have the opportunity to shape behavior now and say, okay, great. A lot of people do this. A lot of people make recurring gifts out of their donor advised fund. Do you want me to talk you through those things? Oh, and by the way, if you ever want to give stock directly to us instead of into your donor advised funds, here's how to do that as well, right? So this has to be a component of every one-on-one -on -one conversation. And by the way, this is very, very donor centric because these types of giving are going to be better for them in terms of taxes to a considerable degree. Uh, one bonus tip here, I mentioned this a few weeks ago, but but it literally will transform your giving in terms of doubling it. Uh, there's some research I really like at a, a large hospital system. A large hospital system sent 60,000 fundraising letters and split them in half and had two treatments, right? The first one said, you know, give us an amount. The second one said, give us an amount, but the higher amounts were higher. And what happened? The second version raised twice as much money per letter, exactly the same letter, exactly the same effort into writing it, into getting it approved by your boss, into getting it printed out, same amount of money in postage. And yet these small tweaks raised twice as much money. And so this is the difference for many organizations hitting your goals or missing your goals, right? How well is that doing? Now, interestingly, uh, one version said 10, 500, or you know, enter whatever you wanted. And yet this did about the same 
as the other one we're looking at. So what's the, what, do we, what are our takeaways here? We want to increase the biggest options. This does not mean increasing the smallest option. Because if I see only 500 and 1,000 as options, and I think I don't have that much money to give, I'm not going to give it all. Because what I'm hearing is small gifts aren't welcome here. When I, when I see those high numbers, what I hear is, oh, many people are giving big gifts. I'll give that. And so these small tweaks can really shift your outcomes. Um, all right. Strategy five, and then we'll get to questions after a couple of quick notes here. One of the things that's really, really important to understand here is end of year is going to be your highest tracked traffic and highest giving period. Many organizations are wasting this by getting a gift and saying farewell, right? You say, wow, I just got, I just got a thousand dollars. Thank you so much. Here's your receipt. Have a great holiday. Now, remember these people care, you know, they're not doing it because they're nice to you. They really care about the impact that you're helping them to have with that money. And so do not just send that static thank you note. It closes the door on further action. At the moment, they're thinking most about what they care about in the world. Instead, we want to send something like this, okay? And I'm going to type it out for you so you can, so when you get the slides, you can copy and paste it and use it yourself. Um, thank you and an additional note, right? This is the subject line. Why do we have that? Well, I'm going to read this. If I just says thank you, I'll say, oh, that's my receipt. I'll go back to it later. But there's it signals there's something else to read here. Dear me, uh, thank you for your generous gift just now. This gift will be put right to work, whatever, right? Uh, rescuing stray animals, getting first generation kids through college, expanding the museum, new cutting edge cancer research, whatever it is, right? This money is being will be put right to work on the thing you care about most, right? So whatever your mission is, put that there. Many people who support the thing that we both care about are interested in learning about how to have an additional impact. In case you are curious, here are three more ways to get involved. One, become a monthly donor, which allows us to plan ahead and make the most of your gifts. And obviously this would link to your monthly donor page. Two, become a volunteer. We have volunteers that do X, right? So we want one non-monetary option here. And then three, join the growing number of people of all ages who are choosing to leave a gift to X, you, in their wills. You can learn more about this and even make your own legal will for free here. Now, this is if you're a free will partner and, you know, we love our free will partners, always welcome more. But if you're not, you know, you can type in your own sort of plan giving language here. And what we're doing is here, we're just saying, hey, look, these are things that other people are doing. And if you're feeling hyped right now about saving animals, saving the planet, educating folks, you know, uh, supporting our local community, whatever it is, now I'm going to go and take all that stuff further. And a lot of these are really valuable. All of these are more valuable than a $100 contribution. And so suddenly that $50 gift might turn into a $50,000 bequest in a way that transformed the organization going forward. And there's no additional outreach here, right? This is just a response to the folks that are giving at the end of the year. And it's it, the big thing is we have to put this in a donor and cause centric framing. So it's not thanks, I'm asking again. It's thanks, you care about X because you care about X and providing more resources on how to care about X. And so that framing allows us to really put more options out there. And as many of you know, some of these bequests from people you might not expect are a million dollars, right? From a hundred dollar donors, right? They're a million dollars and they'll, they'll change the trajectory of your organization. So we always have to do this as well. Um, okay, uh, one last thing, and then a couple of quick notes. Uh, we, free will, me, uh, Phoebe, who helped out a lot here, everybody on our team, we know this is go time, right? We know that that there's ups and downs end of year, that it gets frenetic, that it gets crazy. Um, I'm super excited about what you all are gonna do over the next four months. We're here for you. Um, there are a lot of other resources. These are all free, by the way, just to be extra clear about that. Uh, talking points, scripts, templates, tips. Uh, you know, if there's, I think this is, I don't know, webinar 88, 890. If you wanna go deeper on stock giving, giving to older donors, millennial giving, donor advised funds, uh, I don't know, a couple dozen other things we've talked about over the course of the, the time. Um, please go check those out. If you ever feel like you're just stuck, you know, shoot me a note or, uh, but maybe first take, take a look at those pages and see if there's anything that calls to you first. So uh, check, check that out. Um, and in case you haven't heard it, I uh, just wanted to say a really big thank you for everything you do. Uh, we know that, that, you know, we talk a lot about fundraising. We talk a lot about sort of the professional work of it, but at the end of the day, it goes straight to impact doing many of the most important things in the world. So 
uh, we are quite inspired on a regular basis by, by you all and really grateful for it. Um, a couple other quick resources, again, as sort of our general vibe of thankiness uh, or gratitude. Uh, we are gonna send this book out. My colleague, Phoebe, is gonna drop a survey in the chat. I'm gonna, um, uh, so you can click on that, take 60 seconds, fill it out. If you don't mind, please do that now. Uh, reason one, to get a chance to win this book by M. Grant. It's a really good book. Uh, by the way, once if, when you win these books, if you read them, you know, shoot me a note and let me know what you learned or or how you thought of or what you thought of it. Uh, second thing, uh, this giving guide that I told you about, as well as a bunch of other resources for free, are uh, part of a, a new AI tool that we built to help fundraisers and, and write first drafts for them. We get feedback every day that something like, holy cow, this was so much better than I thought it was going to be. I haven't really used it, super user-friendly. Uh, and this makes me much more excited about AI than I was before I did this. And somehow it really captured the voice of my organization and my director and, and put things into to words. I'm gonna use this all the time, right? That's, that's the sort of emails that I get and read almost every working day uh, from folks that are trying really for the first time. Again, pre, go check that out. Um, you'll be you'll be stunned, You can it's free indefinitely. So. Uh, go for that. It's at willy.freewill.com. We haven't mentioned that. So just type that in. A couple other resources. Um, there's a playbook coming up for National State Planning Awareness Week. If you want to have a successful plan giving year, this and Make a Will Month are the two best ways to do it. So check that out. And we built out an end of year toolkit uh, with things like email templates, phone scripts, and more. So we will email those to you after the session if you're here. Um, so that toolkit hopefully takes a bunch of hours off your work um, and it's customized. So you're going to feel really good about that. Uh, one last announcement before we get to questions, and I realize we don't have tons of time for questions, is that in two days on Thursday at noon Eastern or whatever time uh, this webinar started for you where you are, we're going to walk through some software tools uh, and support around what we call the smart giving suite. So what's the smart giving suite? It's a way to make these non-cash gifts really easy for you to execute on and easy for your donors to give. Uh, donor advised funds, uh, these gifts out of your IRA called qualified charitable distributions, stock and mutual funds and bonds uh, and cryptocurrency for those that are interested. Um, you can come hang out, eat your lunch on Thursday. It's a more casual, uh, shorter event, but people tend to really enjoy these. So we'd love to see you there uh, half an hour-ish on September 7th, which is two days from today. And that is it. Um, here, before we uh, take one question or two, we don't have a ton of time here, um, but other quick notes. In two weeks, we try to do this every two weeks, we're gonna go deep on, on retention of donors. And I know a lot of you said that was a priority. So we really looked at the results and said, okay, what can we offer in terms of keeping donors around, knowing that a leaky bucket is a really big problem for folks. Um, so we're talking about that. We'll focus on, on larger donors, on planned giving donors, but we will talk about annual donors as well. Uh, that's in two weeks, also at noon. And then if you have any questions or you have creative ideas or you know you read the Adam Grant book and you hated it and you want to tell me about it, feel free to shoot me an email at Patrick at Free Will. Um, I'm also pretty easy to find on, on um, LinkedIn. So uh, that's that. Um, we have mm, only... Uh, a minute or two for questions. So maybe instead of diving in there, we'll take a look at them. We'll fold in some of the answers to more commonly asked questions into future webinars to make sure you have access to those and keep learning. And uh, I will say happy unofficial beginning of fall, happy unofficial kickoff of you know the most important parts of our year. And uh, really just love getting to spend this time with you, to learn with you, love seeing all the ideas and contributions in the chat. Uh, sometimes my regret is that this isn't a big open meeting with everybody talking, but oftentimes we brush up against the cap of what Zoom can handle there. So uh, that's why, unfortunately, you only get to see me on video. But um, really loved being here with you today. Uh, looking forward to learning more about the uh, retention and engagement on Thursday, uh, excuse me, in two weeks. And we'd love to see you if you're free in, uh, um, in two days on Thursday. So uh, thanks so much.